Today I'm going to be answering the most asked question about my art. Those are ants? I thought they were bunnies. I'm just joking. I'm actually going to be answering the question, why ants? Also, do they look like bunnies? I will be answering that. I've been wanting to make this video for a while and what better time than to create it than for the release of my very first ever plushie. I am so excited to announce that the ant plushie is now up for pre-order. Check out the link in the description if you want to get your own ant plushie. I can't wait to spread my little ant colony all over the world. So I hope you guys check them out. It's only going to be on sale for less than two weeks at this point, so get them while you can. And with that, let's get to answering some questions about my ants. Our first question is why ants? Because the answer to this first question is so long, let's illustrate a mini ant illustration while I talk. This ant illustration is going to be themed to my recent ant plushie giveaway contest where I prompted everyone to base their drawing off of a photo of the plushie I took. Posing with a mannequin, drawing on a canvas, or taking a selfie with a cactus. All of which I've included into this illustration. Okay, so why do I draw illustration after illustration of hundreds of ants? What's the story here? How did I become the ant queen that everyone calls me? Do I have an ant farm? Am I really a bag of skin filled with millions of ants being controlled from the inside with a mission to brainwash earth into letting ants take over the planet while turning humans into our slaves? Well, yes, but we're not here to talk about that right now. Let's, let's start from the beginning, shall we? You might be familiar with my 500 drawing prompts series here on YouTube. It all began with art block, not knowing what to draw or wanting to expand what I draw. I picked up this book full of 500 prompts in the hopes of pushing myself to be as creative as possible, exercising my creativity to combine random words, or prompts into illustrations. It was like a fun puzzle I had to solve, but there wasn't a correct answer, which I think is really fun about art. So I turned it into a video series. Am I going too deep? Let's get into the dang ants already. Fast forward to prompt number 20, which wow, we are far past prompt number 20. The book gave us the prompts camera and bowl of soup, which was posted on July 4th, 2017, and the rest is history. I drew a museum for ants full of food art and sculptures, and I loved it. I love the simplicity of the bug designs, the isometric sort of room style, all these simple yet complex details, the personalities of the ants, there was just so much to look at. It took a long time to draw, but I felt like the outcome was definitely worth it. I drew my second ant illustration for prompt number 22, flower vase and ladder, which actually might be my favorite ant drawing to this day. Second is the spring illustration. Again, the ants returned in prompt number 29, weeds and flowers, and finally prompt number 33, harvest and pond, which was the start of the seasons series of ant illustrations, as well as the ban of ant illustrations from the prompt series. Because the prompt series was started for me to practice my creativity, I felt like the ants were kind of defeating the purpose of that. It wasn't bringing anything new to the table and was starting to make the prompt series predictable, so I banned them and started creating ant illustrations on my own outside of the 500 drawing prompt series. The only problem with that is, as a YouTuber, I have little to no free time as is, and with how much time the ant illustrations take to create, I don't do them as often as I would like. A lot of the comments were comparing the ant illustrations to Where's Waldo books because I would include the robber ant, a red ant in a mask and striped shirt who was always up to no good sneaking around or stealing something from the scene. Then comments started to demand a book, so that is one of my book goals. Unfortunately, with how much time these illustrations take per drawing, it's going to be a while until that happens. At first, I made it a goal to create one ant illustration per month just to keep it creating and going, but it's been eight months since my last illustration, which makes me sad, and obviously that goal is not successful. So why ants? I just think they're so simple in design, fun, cute, easy for others to draw, and such an iconic character that they became almost a mascot for me, my art, and my YouTube channel. 
You ask me why I love them so much, but let's be honest. I know how much you guys love them, so why do you love them so much, huh? Probably the same reason. They're cute and fun. When I hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I set out to draw an illustration with 1,000 ants, each one representing a subscriber. I started this drawing as something fun to create while live streaming, taking suggestions for what to include, like jokes on my channel or other YouTubers, and then I felt like it became something more. Almost like a collaborative piece between my subscribers. It was interactive and fun. I just really enjoyed creating that piece. Before I finished the illustration, I passed over a hundred thousand subscribers. Was it 300 at that point? But I still wanted to finish the illustration, so I did. And it just became something really ridiculous to do. Because what the heck, a thousand ants in one illustration? Am I crazy? Yes. The ant illustrations have a few reoccurring characters. First, as I already mentioned, is the robber ant. He originated in the first ant drawing as a robber in the museum. It was just meant as a way to fill in space in the top left corner of the drawing where nothing was. Plus, someone robbing a museum is such a cliche I couldn't resist adding one. The second ant to become a must in every illustration is what we have named as the fat ant. The only ant to vary in body size, basically, mainly because, in general, bugs seem to be the same size, I guess, so I just draw them all the same. The fat ant started at a picnic in prompt number 29 and became a well-loved addition. He doesn't always make an appearance, but I try to remember if I can, and every time he's always holding a fistful of things that he is consuming. Aside from those two ants being the only of their kind, the bees also have been making an appearance ever since their debut in prompt number 50, which wasn't my intention. I drew an illustration with several bees and decided it was very familiar or similar to the ant drawings and have been slipping them in ever since. As far as series of ant illustrations go, I do have a couple. The first was a set of seasonal illustrations where I took the same exact scene of a pond and a little field and changed it according to how it would look with different seasons. So in the winter the lake is frozen over and they are ice, ice skating on it, they're fishing in other seasons, swimming in it. This series started off with prompt number 33, and this is also where the ants with the mandibles originated. The spring illustration is my second ever favorite ant illustration. I just love the colors and the inclusion of the bees. Another series for the ants is, to be honest, only one illustration long, is the house series. I have only created the haunted house ants for October of last year, but I love it. I also want to continue a mini ant series, which is what I'm working on right now. I have done a couple already, but I need to redo them. They were done on location at a coffee shop and on an airplane, so the quality isn't quite what I would want it to be, and I also used a different watercolor set than usual, so the quality isn't quite there. And now today we are creating the art studio mini ant illustration. Which, like I said, I themed to my recent ant plushie giveaway in the photos. So it's just an art studio, a very small ant illustration room. We have ants with art supplies, sketchbooks. I've got some paint splattered around the room just to add some color to it, and some ants are even covered in paint. All right, uh, I think that's that for the origin of the ants. Let's move on to question number two. Why do your ants only have four legs? This is probably, I think, the most asked question about my ants. With the nature of how small I draw these illustrations, it's very hard to get all six legs of an ant on a single figure. Impossible? No, but have you ever tried to draw hundreds of a very small thing while trying to include every detail? On occasion, I will draw an ant very large and I include the fifth and sixth limbs because I think they are fun. Plus, as I mentioned, there is much, much more room to include all the limbs. It's not unusual for an illustrated style like mine to take liberties on the designs of characters and animals, so I'm not the first nor the last person to do this. 
Question number three. Those are ants? I thought they were bunnies. Okay, did I say the leg question was the most common? This is actually the most common. I mean, I know my ant drawings aren't the most accurate, but what kind of bunny have you been seeing? Because what? Okay. Here is a somewhat realistic drawing of an ant. At least the proportions are normal. We have the antenna, head, thorlax, thorlax, abdomen, and of course the six legs, eyes, yada yada yada. Here we have my stylized ant. We have the antenna, which are stylized in a very cute way. As an illustrator who wants to make content for a younger audience, I think it's important to be aware of how to make things cute and friendly. The bigger, rounder, and more bubbly something is, the friendlier it looks. I'm not saying all children's content should be in this style, but you gotta admit, even if they look like ears, they're pretty dang cute. The head, thorax, and abdomen, which everyone likes to call the ant thick for, and instead of six legs, I have four, or limbs rather, because details are hard when drawing a half-inch drawing. Eyes, and yada yada yada. Sometimes I give the ants mandibles, but not very often. The reason why most of my ants don't have mandibles is simply for expression's sake. Adding a mouth in between them would only complicate their designs, and I wanted a mouth that could express things. Anyways, here's a bunny! I don't understand where in the world you guys live where bunnies look like my ants, but sure, whatever. Oh, and also, in general, my ants are anthropomorphized? Did I? I feel like I struggle with that word every time. Basically, it means an animal or creature or whatever that usually stands on multiple legs is standing on two and is kind of like a humanoid. My ants are more on the bug side, I think, but they do stand on two legs and have arms and do human things, so they're a cartoon character, you guys. Come on. Come on. Question number four. Why do you only draw black and red ants? There are more colors of ants, Casey! When it comes to illustration, I find that limiting your color palette is very useful when creating a cohesive piece. Sure, there is nothing wrong with art that uses every color of the rainbow, but personally, having a mess of colors doesn't appeal to me. Ants of every color just create a cluster of a mess. By limiting my ant colors to the most common ants, black and red, it creates not only a simple palette to work with, but also the dull colors of the ants give me more room to play around with the background colors and not having to worry about them clashing with each other. Also, why my black ants are basically a blue color. I use the color Payne's Gray, which I think adds a bit more to the illustration than using straight up black or gray. It's a slightly really dark blue-black color. It's lovely. I love it. So the reason why I haven't included any of the other variety of ants like wing ants, honeypot ants, or turtle ants to name a few is similar to why I don't color them every rainbow color. There's a science to the clutter of an ant drawing and keeping it simple keeps it organized. I sometimes include different bugs like bees or mosquitoes, ladybugs, and other creatures but they aren't as common. They will show up from time to time, but the most popular ant will always be the basic default type, and I mostly favor the black ants just because I love Payne's Gray. Question number five, when is an ant book coming? One day. Question number six, how long does it usually take for you to create an ant drawing? Well, it depends on the complexity and obviously the size. If I'm doing the mini one that I did today, I could do that in a day. But if I'm doing a full eight by 10 ant illustration, usually it takes me a whole day to pencil and ink it. Inking alone takes two or three hours on an eight by 10. And then there's coloring it, which again, takes many hours because there's just so many little tiny details. They take a long time. I, I would say two days is the average range for an ant drawing. Question number seven, do you have an ant farm? As iconic as an ant farm would be for me to have here in my office, uh, I don't for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, I don't want ants to escape and just be in my office. I don't want, I don't want bugs everywhere. Uh, reason number two, I have looked into how to take care of ants just because it would be kind of funny, but honestly, they, they're like a pet and they, they take a lot of work to take care of and I just don't have the time 
nor want the responsibility of taking care of an ant colony. It's just, you know, that, there's that's lives in my hands that I can't be responsible for. And the last question, number eight, do you know Ants Canada here on YouTube? I do know Ants Canada, but like, unfortunately, I'm not uh, super into the actual bug ants, so as interesting as his videos are to pop into sometimes, I'm just not really into actual real ants. Okay, so with that, let's get into how to draw an ant, because that is another very common question I get. Hey, can you make a tutorial on how to draw ants? So let's get into it. Let's learn how to draw an ant. As someone who has drawn thousands of ants herself, this is second nature, but let's get into it. Usually when I start off with drawing my ants, I start off with a little oval for the head. There you go. And then you do just two little bloop. Bloops, I don't know what you call those. I call them bloops because when I do them, I bloop, bloop. Just flick your hand up and then bring it back down. These days I add a little shadow to the farthest antenna and then I add a face to it. So there's a lot of default faces for my ants. A good one is the grin with the teeth and the little oval eyes. Other popular faces are like the surprise face, which is a very common one. I also like to have their tongue sticking out. So you do a straight line, a little curve and bloop. And then usually squinty eyes with that one. The old ants have sad looking faces, so their eyes are drooping upwards, but they do smile because they're old and happy. If I do do an ant with a pincer, I will draw an oval for the head, do the bloop, bloops for the antennas, and then for the pincers, it's a curve and three little bumps like that. Bump, bump, bump. There you go! And I give them, give them eyes. All right, so continuing from the head, we have our oval. And then I do a small circle, but then leave an open spot for the arm to come off. So the arm, arm shapes for my ants are usually like a rectangle that gets big at the end. And then a division for um, two fingers and then a little triangle coming off. So I usually go up, a little bump for the thumb, come around here, boop. Usually I make it a little curvy as well. Oh my god, I just smeared the ink! Usually I make it curvy on this section so that it just adds a little bit of round friendliness instead of making it nice and harsh. And there's our finger division. For the butt area, I do a big oval, and just like the body, I leave an open area for the leg. So let's do our oval, leave a spot open there for the leg to come off. And just like the arms, the legs are usually, they get, now the ants have evolved over time. So it used to be that their legs were just thin like that. But these days I make them get a little bit thicker near the foot area and thinner up here where the body area is. So. Where we have our hole here, I will leap. There you go. Now, the shape of the limbs do vary depending on how fast I'm going. So usually my ants are walking, so I will have a bent leg right here. So a triangle, another triangle, and then the foot usually peeks out from the side. So that is our basic ant pose. Oh, and we do want our last arm. So again, just do that rounded rectangle shape in our thumb. And there you go, fill it in. The back limbs or the limbs that are farther away from the viewer, I usually just make black just to separate them a little bit. I think it's a fun style. You can also switch those two legs. So we have our body and the front. No, my God, I just did the wrong thing. Okay, we have our body. And the front leg is bent, so we just curve it upwards. Ha! There you go. And then the back leg is the one that is straight. And that's how you draw an ant. Very simple shapes, just kind of playing around with making it as simple and fun and easy as possible. 
Because you know what? I'm drawing hundreds of these guys, so it has to be very easy and quick and simple. Otherwise, I would go absolutely bonkers. But aren't they cute? There you go. There's how to draw an ant. And there you go. There is everything you need to know about my ant illustrations and drawings and why I draw them. At least the most commonly asked questions. Again, if you want to get your own ant plushie for pre-order, he's only going to be up for two weeks. So get him while you can. He won't be here long. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.